my boys are six and seven years old. I, I, I think a lot about them. And when I was listening to your book my, many months ago before you came back on the show, I, I'm just you know, I, I see the world through their eyes now and mm -hmm. they're six and seven, so they're young. I'm not just having them, but felt like I just had them. And I, I think about them being 16 and 17. And without even you coming in here saying 30, 35, 20, I mean 20, 35 or 37, I say this all the time. I mean, their teenage years, I say this to my students, I say their teenage years are gonna be unlike any other humans in 200,000 years. Like, they just will be. What do I do about that? So we spoke about what we do about the tech. Let's talk about what we do about life. Okay. So, um, I don't know if I wanna, let, let, let's put it this way. If you were terminally ill, and you know that you know, in 10 years time, you're going to leave the world, what would you do? I would do all the things that are important to me, all the things that matter to me. I would make sure I take care of all the people that need taken care of. I would, I would do all those things. I would do all the right things, maybe. Yeah, I, I hate to break the news to you. You are terminally ill. We are all born to die, okay? We are all born to struggle a little bit in life. That's the truth. The truth of the matter is, with everything that's coming, hmm, what I tend to believe is that what we need is to love our kids more, is to hold them closer, okay? Is to try and make them resilient to the world that's about to come by us being resilient to the world that's about to come. The, it, it, is to literally forget that, we spoke about this before we started the show, the masculine energy of let me plan their future, okay? To the feminine energy of let me love them right now. Let me, let me give them what they deserve this moment. Because you know what? I don't know what the next moment is going to be, so there is no point planning it. In my, in my view, a singularity means they're going to have a 50-50 chance of having a better life than we had in 10 years' time, okay? They're going to have a 50-50 chance of having access to intelligence that we never even dreamt of. Hmm? If we give our energy and prioritize the negative conversation, we're gonna get them to lose that chance. We, we need, to, we need to, to, to remember that, the, you know, I, again, I, 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 I spoke to an incredible uh, Canadian philosopher, uh, Stephen uh, Jenkinson, who, who worked with the terminally ill for 30 years of his life. And he said, I know I, him. Yeah, incredible. Yeah, he, he, wrote, he wrote a book called Die Wise. Yeah, yeah okay. he was on the show. Yeah, he was, yeah. And, and, incredible. And, incredible. And he basically says, die wise. We're always dying all the time. Hmm? Die wise. And dying wise is to live. Dying wise is to live. Is to, say, is to tell yourself, whatever will happen, I will take care of it when I'm informed enough to know how to take care of it. Between now and then, I'm completely here, I'm completely alive, right. okay? I'm completely connected, I'm completely loving, I'm completely enjoying every minute of it. Because when I, when I tell the world that you're, you're gonna look back in 2035 and you're not gonna be able to recognize those years, I'm saying our current lifestyle is not gonna last forever. Enjoy the hell out of it. <laughs> Amen to that. Yeah, live it, right. completely. Hug them every single day. Right and That's cherish every minute of this current existence we have and all the things that you begrudge sometimes, those could be the things that you wish you could have back for just one second, right? You, you know my story, huh? So in my, in my story when I lost Ali, hmm? so I lost my son when he was 21 and, and in, you know, the, the first thought that came to my mind was, I wish I could just have him for two more minutes to hug him. Just, I'm, I'm not bargaining with, for much, okay? Just two minutes to hug him. And then I started to question how many two minutes I had with him and how many hugs were inv involved. I mean, Ali was a hugger, so there were quite a few. But, but that's the point. The point is, sadly, and I say this to everyone, and I know they hate me when I do, when I say it, you have no guarantee that your Ali is not gonna leave tomorrow, okay? The only thing you have a guarantee is that they're here now and they're huggable, 
okay? Just hug the hell out of them, that's it, okay? The, the, the stop worrying about what's outside your area of, uh, of influence. Whatever is within our area of concern shouldn't be part of our life. We should have a conversation around it, direct it to the people who it resides within the area of influence of. And for us, we live fully. We become totally present in this present moment because that's on, the only moment we have. Surprising advice from a guy that you know spends most of his time talking about the AI of the future. I it is a very interesting struggle for me, Brian. I know you know you know me well, so I, I kept quiet. I kept hinting. Let me call it this way. I kept hinting from twenty twenty from twenty eighteen to twenty twenty. Then I wrote Scary Smart. Scary Smart is not hinting at all. Scary Smart is saying, "Look at your watch. This is about to happen." Okay. And, and now this year, I'm just not able to, to, to stay quiet. I can't, you know, I have lived with those machines. I know what most people don't understand is Bard or the likes of Bard was already in a reasonably good quality AI in 2017, 2018, right? right? What you see in the open internet today is six years in the past you have no idea how far we're going, okay? So, so the, the, the game here is, it is now. And, and I'm, I'm basically saying, politicians need to get up and talk about this. They need to do two things. They need to, one, uh, regulate the bad guy, okay? Uh, or regulate those who think they are good guys, but they're not. Two is they need to prepare for the upcoming societal change and possible AI-driven crime. They need to prepare for that. They need to have focus on how are we going to pay UBI? How are we go what are we going to do about those who lose their jobs? What are, how are we going to reskill society? How are we going to integrate AI so that we can compete with other economies? How are we going to prepare for all of this? And how are we going to have a cyber policeman for the cyber criminal? Okay, that's government. Investors, developers, and business people, I beg you, do what, what, uh, what uh, uh, Larry Page used to teach us, okay? Google still today is bigger than all of the defense companies combined, okay? It pays to do good for the world. Okay, Lockheed Martin, if, you know, if, they, if they build you know, weapons, are a fraction of the size of Google it pays to, go, to do good for the world. So if you're gonna invest in AI, or if you're gonna build a startup in AI, or if you're gonna code AI, build something ethical. That's number two. And number three is the society at large. And the society at large has the biggest responsibility. Number one is show up as a human, with the human values, because you are the teacher of the machines. You are the role model, you are the father, okay? If you behave in an, in an ethical way, they will, be, will learn that ethical behavior is needed and to engage the conversation get get you know get, get others to be aware of this okay get others to uh, you know to discuss it with you and open your your you know your your thinking about it and get ready okay if you're a graphics designer or if you're a, law, a lawyer or if you're a you know tell yourself in an in a world where some machine will do this better than me what do i have the skill to do going forward and I, I keep saying, the biggest skills that will remain are the skills of human connection. So even though machines will be able to create music that surpasses every, you know, uh, the, the depth of every musical melody we've created so far, I'll still go to a live performance. Right, and it'll feel different. And it'll, it will feel different. Right, and maybe even the human lyrics might fat sound different. Human lyrics will sound different. I, I as an author, Okay, I went through a roller coaster myself. Should I ever write again? Okay, yeah, I'll 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 end up being the Bentley of what of the books out there. You know, the handmade, handcrafted, not a lot of 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 units sold, but really it has a human touch in it. If you think about it, right. yeah, I think that human bit is where is the is the bit where we need to invest in. So Jim Rickards has just recorded a video that's not available to anyone in the public and he's gonna be talking about how this upcoming recession is gonna be fast, it's gonna be bloody, it's gonna be nasty. But at the same time, he's gonna show you how you can position yourself to profit from all of this chaos. Now we've made this video only available to our viewers 
go to LondonReel.tv forward slash Jim, watch that immediately. I can't say enough good things about Jim Rickards. He understands the global economic system better than any guest I've ever had on London Real. His predictions are almost uncannily true, and you can learn how to profit from his vision, from his expertise, and his understanding of economics. So go to LondonReel.tv forward slash Jim or click the link below. It's an excellent, excellent look on what's gonna happen in the future and how you can position yourself to profit from that. Jim is one of the best in the business, one of my favorite guests on London Real, and he's very, very good at predicting the future and showing us all to profit from it. So click the link and I hope you enjoy. The greedy bankers are about to do it again. In 2008, they crashed our financial system and nearly bankrupted the entire global economy. Then they received trillions of dollars in government bailouts. And after, they demanded fat bonuses paid for by you, the taxpayer. It turns out the banks haven't just been screwing the American taxpayers, they're also screwing over their investors. Turns out uh, the banking industry is the worst place you could put your money despite enormous taxpayer bailouts. Now the bankers are back to take away your financial freedom. They lie and tell you that cryptocurrency isn't safe. They try to make it illegal for you to choose how to invest your hard-earned money. They lie and say cryptocurrency is used by money launderers and criminals. But look at the record. It's the banks themselves that launder hundreds of billions of dollars every year to the biggest criminal operations in the world. Leaked documents have revealed how some UK banks have helped criminals, money launderers and Russians under sanctions. American authorities discovered that the Sinaloa cartel moved $881 million through HSBC accounts as bank officials turned a blind eye to the illegality. The bankers lie and say cryptocurrency is not a real investment. Meanwhile, the smartest CEOs in the world are buying billions and billions of it. The truth is that banks lie about cryptocurrency because it makes them scared. The banks take $9 trillion per year of your hard-earned money, and they are worried that they will finally be exposed. They're scared because crypto means they can no longer control your money, which means they can no longer control you. They are scared because you might actually understand your money and intelligently decide what to do with it. Now is the time for us to come together, fight back, and take control. It's time to educate ourselves, our families, and our communities. Because financial education means financial freedom. We know that cryptocurrencies will help us build the new decentralized financial system of the future. A banking system that is of the people, by the people, and for the people. A banking system where access to finance is a fundamental human right. A banking system that is free and fair and welcomes all humans on this earth. The DeFi revolution is happening. We, the people, can no longer be fooled. We choose to take control of our finances. We choose to take control of our freedom. We choose to take control of our future. Join us and let's take back our financial freedom forever.